What's up, everybody? Phil the Itachi here. You know what it is, and thank you very much for tuning in to another BlizzCon update video. And I couldn't wait to get this one released because, as you all know, World of Warcraft is definitely my game out of the whole Blizzard franchise. And most of our content under the YouTube channel does come from World of Warcraft itself. So, without further ado, as always, um, if you haven't seen all the others, this is probably the last one that I'm going to be releasing. Um, I did release one for Overwatch, Starcraft, Diablo. Uh, Heroes of the Storm, as well as Hearthstone, so go ahead and check out the other five BlizzCon recap, complete recap videos if you haven't done so already. Um, but this is the one for World of Warcraft, and we're going to be going over um, the trailers in the beginning, and then we're going to go over some of the information that was released, not all of it. And the reason being is you never know, I'm going over the major updates in this video, um, you never know when those minor updates are going to change, and I do believe some of them are going to change, but we're going to be going over everything that is definitely going to be coming, uh, definitely that we're going to be wanting to see, and since this is World of Warcraft, and since I know a lot more about this game than, let's say, Starcraft, Diablo, and even Heroes of the Storm, but I know a little bit more about Heroes of the Storm than Starcraft and Diablo, um, I'm going to go a little bit more into detail on what I think and what I want to see as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the World of Warcraft announcement i was about to say what this announcement is for i've seen all of this already um but this is an announcement that we've all been waiting for and i'm very interested in talking about so without further ado let's get to it Alrighty. so if you haven't seen it already or haven't or don't know about the update chromie herself no you can't World of Warcraft fam. So, if you haven't noticed already, or you haven't seen any of the updates on, I mean, if, if, I don't know where you, I don't know how you don't know about this, but if you don't know about this somehow, World of Warcraft is turning back time, and they're going to be working on, I mean, they've already started it, but releasing vanilla WoW servers. So basically, we're going to be able to play the game how it was. 13 years ago, back in 2004. However, I do see this coming out and probably towards the end of the next expansion. I don't see it coming out anytime soon, but that is okay because I see this as something that we want, but we don't want it to take time from the main game itself. So I say releasing this like towards the end of an expansion uh, where we will have time to play it because that's usually when content is on the down low um, that's probably the best time for them to go ahead and release this because I mean there's not any content um, it gives us a chance to go ahead and play World of Warcraft Classic and the way they can they're gonna basically I'm saying this they're turning back time all the way until vanilla WoW so we get to play the game how it was from 1 to 60 um, professions are back uh, the way they were all the classes, all the spells, the talents, um, the probably leveling up a weapon. I mean, you guys remember you had to freaking one all the way to max level on your weapon, or you had to, as a warlock, use your staff to level it up for absolutely no reason, but you, you did it anyways. Um, they're probably all of that's coming back, so I'm pretty sure it's basically as simple as getting the old files of the game, cutting off everything from Burning Crusade and to what there is now and basically 1 to 60 dumping all that content onto new servers and making sure it works because back in the day it didn't work but we're gonna notice that PvE rating we all said it was difficult and everything was hard back then it was basically we were all new to World of Warcraft so it wasn't really difficult we just didn't really know how to play video games back then um, at that type of scale so it's probably going to be a cakewalk during the raids now. Uh, Molten Core, probably not going to be that bad. Uh, on Courage, probably not going to be that bad. Nectaramus, the hell is hard about Thaddeus, fam? Positive, negative, that's all you have to worry about. It's not as complex as it is nowadays. It gets really difficult nowadays, but I mean, that's something that we're really looking forward to. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. World of Warcraft Classic servers are coming into play. I will be talking about more about that. But let's get into the next announcement, which is the brand new expansion that is to be released after Legion, uh, probably in 2018 sometime, because we haven't hit alpha or beta testing servers yet. 
Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and check out the cinematic. I have seen it, and it is absolutely amazing. So let's watch. Alrighty. Here we go. Blizzard Entertainment. You already know it's going to be epic when you see that. So this is probably one of the... I mean, I love cinematics. And Blizzard really knows how to portray cinematics. And my favorite lore character in the game is right here, fam. Sylvanas. I absolutely love her as a character in the game. But I don't know how this expansion is going to work out. And I'll explain what I mean by that in just a bit. So... Simply, Blizzard Entertainment presents, it's a brand new expansion, uh, Heroes of Azeroth, and the Alliance of Facing Off Against the Horde is kind of a PvP-based expansion, but not the whole thing PvP, guys. That's just like the overview of what to expect in this game, but if you guys like to raid and all that stuff, it's not just PvP. She looks absolutely amazing as well as a character. Just her storyline is absolutely the best and my favorite in my game by far. That's why I play Forsaken as well, even though we look cool. But Sylvanas, as well as the Alliance leader, they have to rally their troops um, because the troops are struggling, both Horde and Alliance. They're like. They're, they're, as you can already see, they're taking kneels. Sylvanas is noticing this. She needs to take action herself right here, and that's what she's about to do. She's going to show her horde troops that we need to step up because we're taking L's. We're taking huge L's right now. So she's about to go beast mode, and she's about to do some work. Look at this. Imagine being in her position right there. That is so cool. And they see what she's doing, and they're going to be behind her. Uh, facing off against the Alliance. Now, what is that form right there? I've always wondered. How 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 did she do that? It brings you chills whenever you hear that, doesn't it? Absolutely amazing. But, hey, now the Alliance are taking L's, and they're going to have to rally back behind their leader as well. So... It's basically a 50-50 battle that they tried to portray in the cinematic. And I'm looking forward to this. There's so much cool stuff that is going to be coming out with this expansion, which we'll be going over in just a bit. I'll be able to show you some of the lands and new zones as well. People say I look like this guy, by the way. I have the hairstyle, if I freaking put it that way. So who knows, maybe next World of Warcraft movie... Check out my tweets because I got the director to respond to one of my tweets and uh, he's down. He's definitely down, fam. I mean, I wouldn't want to play an Alliance character, but hey, I mean, if, if we're freaking twins, I, I might as well. Absolutely amazing. So he sees his troops struggling. He does exactly what Sylvanas says, but this time he mass resurrects like a freaking pro because they took bigger L's than the Horde. Look at Sylvanas, man. Absolutely beast. She looks a little bit different. She looks a little bit skinnier in this uh, cinematic, like her face. But the reason why I don't get, what I don't get is, um, so Teldrassil is getting attacked by the Horde. Horde burn it down and take it over. So they have the Kalimdor. All, all Kalimdor belongs to the Horde. And then Eastern Kingdoms, as you can see, the Alliance take over Lordaeron. So Undercity, all that stuff has gone all towards the Alliance. Now, the Alliance don't have all of Eastern Kingdoms because up north we got Silvermoon for Blood Elves and they're kind of, that's those. And what I don't get is, how do the starting zones for those react? Is it going to be time locked like uh, Blasted Lands is for Cataclysm? So, I mean, later on in the story throughout leveling, you're going to notice something changes and you do get to level up as an original undead. In uh, Truce Fall Blades, who knows? But uh, that was pretty much the cinematic. Now let's go ahead and check out the Battle for Azeroth features themselves. So we got a lot of cool features, as always. Oh, I've actually not seen this one. Unless I don't remember it. Okay, yeah, yeah. So Teldrassil, Horde, uh, burnt it up. They take it over. 
So Kalimdor's for the Horde, as you can see. And then uh, Eastern Kingdoms is for the Alliance, but uh, Silver Moon with Blood Elves, as well as the Draenei Zones, they're still their respective spots. So the Alliance are going to go ahead and use fleets to go ahead and take over New Continent Kulturas, which is going to be for the Alliance only. So they go ahead and take over this zone, which is very cool to see. And each zone, there's a, this is the Alliance one, they have three different sections and areas, which we will go ahead and talk about as well. And Horde actually do something very, very similar. They take over another island. Which... The Zandalari Trolls. So we get to take over Zandalar. We don't take it over necessarily. We go ahead and try to work with these guys. And then this Zandalar uh, island also has three different sub-regions within the island as well. So the Alliance got three regions. The Horde got three regions and their new islands, and then there's also many islands throughout that surround these two locations. Um, basically we get the adventure to level 120, as always. Uh, new dungeons and raids, as always, you get the PvE content, you get the leveling content. We've got PvP content that is definitely going to be coming, and I hope it's great. Plunder Uncharted Islands, which I was just talking about, um, which we get to go ahead and have some fun with, and then... Um, we got Dominate Warfront, so Warfront are going to be taking uh, action throughout Azeroth, and which are kind of like scenarios. And if I'm not mistaken, those are the 20 player Warfronts. Uh, we got Allied Races as well. So we got some brand new races that are going to be joining and that are going to be playable. These are kind of like sub-races to existing races as well. So Alliance take over Kulturas, Horde take over Zandalar, and freaking battle it out in uh, Heroes of freaking Azeroth for World of Warcraft for the next expansion. So before we get into and dive on in, I'm going to go ahead and check out a new video that I just recently noticed and saw on the website and I've never seen it before. It is the BlizzCon 2017 Battle for Lordaeron Diorama. And basically what this was, it was a world record, a Guinness World Record for the largest diorama ever created. And all the people that attended BlizzCon um, I don't think any of the ticket holders got it, but um, those that attended BlizzCon that have a battle tag, that have a World of Warcraft character, had their character put into this diorama. So I want to go ahead and check this one out. Oh, and they have their names underneath as well, so that's really cool. So over 10,000 player characters. So this is definitely only the ones that went to BlizzCon. Over 1,300 square feet of battlefield. Wow. How do they do this so fast? One epic BlizzCon reveal. Imagine looking. How do they... What if you're in the middle of that thing now? Like, what if you're in the middle? How do you go find yourself in the middle of all of those? Imagine looking through 10,000 pieces. I don't think people did that, trust me. The only way you found yourself is if you were on the very, very edge and you just got lucky. That's the only way you found yourself. That is very, very cool. Um, so without further ado, we're actually going to go ahead and check out some of the uh, new updates that are going to be coming. So let's get to it. Alrighty, so World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth has been released. We just saw the cinematic and the features trailer. So we're going to be declaring our allegiance finally. So Azeroth paid a terrible price to end the apocalyptic march of the Legion's Crusade, which is the expansion we are currently in. But even as the world's wounds are tended, it is the shattered trust between the Alliance and Horde that may prove hardest to mend. As this old, age-old conflict reignites, join your allies and champions and factions cause Azeroth's future will be forged in the fires of war. And basically, you have to choose a faction in this one now. You you can no longer be dual. I mean, you, you can be dual. And the reason why I say that is I'm definitely going to be dual. And uh, basically, what I mean by that is I'm going to play Horde. I'm going to still play Alliance. If I can get find time to level some Alliance characters, I'm definitely going to go ahead and adventure there. So 
Now we get to also recruit allied races. So explore Azeroth as one of six new playable allied races, including four you've encountered in your campaign against the Legion. Uh, embark on a quest to earn their favor and unlock each race, adding their strength to your faction. Create a new character and complete the full leveling experience and earn a distinctive heritage armor set, which we will also be able to see in some uh, pictures that I was able to obtain. Um, basically, these are sub races to current races, and um, these are also the six of them that will be now playable as allied races in the new expansion, and they're also going to be adding more. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and check out the very first allied race that we will be able to unlock, and that is the High Mountain Torn. So allied races, um, the High Mountain Torn is the, for the faction of Horde, of course, and it is a sub-race to the Torn. Descended from the Huon, brave hero of the War of Ancients, the High Mountain Torn honor the spirits of Earth, River, and Sky. Though the Legion invaded their lands and sowed seeds of distress between them, the tribes of High Mountain stand united once more. At long last, they are ready to venture beyond their sacred mountain and stand beside their kin from Kalimdor, lending their nobility and strength. Uh, to the mighty horde, and there's going to be available classes of warrior, shaman, monk, hunter, and druid for this sub race of the High Mountain Torn. And uh, we're also going to go ahead and check out the um, this is basically the set that you will be able to gain. And these sub races do start at level 20, so you don't have to level them from one. Um, once you've unlocked them through a uh, quest line, you'll be able to start this new race at level 20. And once you reach the max level, with this, you cannot uh, pay for a race change and get at max level. You have to actually level from 20 to max. You'll get an achievement, and you'll get a cool transmog set that you can use on any character you want. And um, this is basically what it looks like. So it's a very cool, and you do get to keep the uh, the totems, I believe, with the... Um, I don't think that has anything to do with the, uh, the transmog set. I believe that actually comes with the torrents themselves, but I am not too sure, so we will go ahead and check that out in just a bit. Next up, the Lightforge Draenei Faction Alliance for Untold Millennia, the Army of the Light Warage War against the Burning Legion throughout the Twisting Nether. The Draenei most committed to their long crusade would undergo a ritual to become Lightforge, infusing their bodies with the very essence of the Holy Light. After finally achieving victory on Argus, the Lightforge Draenei have undertaken a new mission protecting Azeroth from rising threats and helping the Alliance push back against the Horde aggression with available classes of Hunter, Mage, Paladin, Priest, and Warrior. Now, if I'm to say who's got the better deal so far, it is definitely the Alliance. Lightforge Draenei are definitely ten times cooler than High Mountain freaking Torn. So, let's go ahead and check out their very cool and epic transmog set. Uh, very fitting and very unique and again you do have to level them from their bottom level of 20 all the way to max so next up let's go ahead and check out the next sub race that we'll be able to unlock this one's for the horde now this one's cool because it's basically a night elf but they're nightborn faction horde and we actually get our own night elves um, isolated behind a protective barrier for 10,000 years the elves of Suramar grew increasingly dependent upon the arcane magic of the Nightwell. To protect this font of power, the leaders of the Nightborn uh, shook a bargain with the Burning Legion that plunged their kingdom into civil war. After fighting for freedom from their demonic masters, the Nightborn seek allies in the Horde to help them reclaim their place in this world. With available classes of Hunter, Hunters are everywhere, same with Warriors, man. Mage, Monk, Priest, Rogue, as well as Warlock. So I would like a Nightborn Warlock, but nothing's going to take me away from the Undead faction. And um, yeah, looking at their transmog, they also have a cool looking transmog, and it fits them absolutely amazingly as well. So the next allied race that we will be able to unlock, number four, for the Alliance are Void Elves. Now this is my favorite sub-race out of all of them. They're absolutely cool, and I really, really hate that they're Alliance. Um, many have, but they give me a reason to definitely level up an alliance next. Um, many have sought to harness the corrupted magic of the void. Most who try to fall into the madness, determined to use his power for the good of Azeroth, the Laria Windrunner, is the first immortal to succeed in defying the Shadow's Whispers. Coming to the aid of the group of the kin, uh, who nearly gave into the darkness, god damn the Windrunners are going to have some sister um, fighting. I mean, Sylvanas is helping the Horde, Illyria Windrunners rocking it over here with the Alliance still, Valeria has vowed to train these Void Elves to control the shadows within them and pledge their newfound powers to the Alliance. 
hunters, mages, monks, priests, rogue, definitely warlocks fam, and warriors for this brand new Void Elf faction of the Alliance. And they're my favorite race, and they also have probably the coolest looking transmog set as well. So next up, uh, we got some bolstering of our ranks. The Zandalari Trolls and the Dark Iron Dwarves are also going to be factions that we'll be able to unlock. Uh, Zandalari Trolls, of course, for the um, the Horde. Dark Iron Dwarves for the Alliance. Even more allies await in unexplored lands as heroes of the Alliance adventure through Kul Turas. We'll have a chance to recruit the Dark Iron Dwarves. And in Zandalar, uh, champions of the Horde will convince the Zandalari Trolls to help join them. So those are the two factions that are going to be coming out of the new expansion, and while the other four races are going to be coming kind of from Legion content. And uh, basically, here is the uh, Dark Iron Dwarves transmog set from leveling from 20 to max level, and now we also get to see the Zandalari Trolls transmog set as well. Let's go ahead and look at basically the Alliance Kingdom of Kul Turas, which is the new island that the Alliance are going to be coming from Eastern Kingdoms to go ahead and basically take control of. So as a hero of the Mighty Alliance, journey of the sea-fearing kingdom of Kul Turas, home to of Jaina Proudmoore, untangle a web of betrayal and dark magic as you encounter power-hungry pirates, witches, wielding death magic, mystical sea priests, and more. Exploring the stony peaks of Tiragard Sound, trek across Dressfar's high plains and red forests, and navigate the intricate inland canals of Stormsong Valley as you convince the fractured kingdom to join your cause. So Tiragard Sound is the um, the main capital that is going to be for Kulturas for the Alliance. Uh, we also got a zone called Dressvar and a zone called Stormsong Valley. And um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and look at some of the um, the pictures that we'll be able to see in this zone. And I thought it was very cool to actually gather these screenshots of the zone because it goes ahead and shows you what to expect in the, um, the Kulturas for the Alliance. And what I've noticed about this is the fact that it is very each in Kulturas' three subzones, uh, which we just went over, and I believe uh, one was Tiragard, and one was Dressfar, and one was Stormsong Valley. Um, there's so much distinction between all of these zones. They, if you go from one to the other, you're going to notice how much of a difference there is, and it is absolutely amazing. And I cannot wait to adventure into this as well myself. Next up, we got the Horde Empire of the Zandalar. Now, I kind of wish I was Alliance, because Zandalar trolls, it's just, I mean, I've seen it over and over again. It's just not fun for me, but that's not to say it won't be fun. So, prepare for the Horde of for war by recruiting the ancient empire of Zandalar. In this troll-dominated territory, ancient evil awaits to be unleashed on the world as you battle crazed blood troll warshippers, uh, gargantuan dinosaurs, and titan constructs, discover Zuldazar, the oldest city in Azeroth. Unveil the bleak swamps of Nazmir and traverse the deadly deserts of Voldoon. So just like the Alliance, we got three subzones. Zoldazar, which is going to be the, the main hub in Zandalar, uh, Nazmir as well as Voldoon. And again, these three subzones also look very, very different, which is what we're going to be seeing in these screenshots as well. So it's just so I cannot wait to absolutely see these lands. That's a, that's one of my favorite things about a new expansion is being able to explore, being able to do all the new quests, uh, being able to see what's out there and I know there's so much in this game that is out there already and I haven't seen it all but I cannot wait for this uh, new expansion to hit uh, beta or alpha servers and I hope I get a pre-invite. I'm pretty sure I will um, because it's definitely going to be unique and it's definitely going to be fun to go ahead and explore some new and uncharted lands and go ahead and show it to you guys as well. So what else do we got? We got the plunder of uncharted islands set for sale, the previously unmapped Isles of Azeroth. So these aren't on the maps. Um, they're kind of like scenarios. Uh, they're three person scenarios. Battle in groups of three as you race against uh, cunning rival intruders or enemy players to collect islands resources. Constantly evolving challenges await as you traverse frozen landscapes near Northrend, open the gates of an abandoned Gonean castle or navigate a war between elementals and more. But I did get pictures of two of them. Um, the Gilnean Castle, as well as um, one of the uh, one of the uh, sub-islands as well. I don't, I forget the names, but I do have them on the, uh, on the screenshots. Um, uh, there's a lot more than just these two, by the way. 
and they're going to be doing a lot of content with this but while I am talking I'll go ahead and show you basically what these islands look like so one is Ungol Ruins and basically how this is going to work is there are three person scenarios and there's going to be four levels of difficulty and basically you, yeah, there's going to be normal uh, heroic and mythic and I believe the other one PvP and how that's going to work is normal heroic and mythic of course I mean it's three person scenarios you have to do some objectives and uh, basically you're trying to get the brand new uh, resources for um, Heroes of the uh, Heroes of Ezra uh, you basically you're trying to get as much resources for your um, faction as you can from this island take it back on ship to your ports and there's normal heroic and mythic so basically increasing difficulty common sense and then there's also going to be a fourth level of difficulty called pvp and how that works is it's actually pvp so a team of three on horde team of three on alliance the exact same thing but you also have to fight each other to go ahead and encounter that so i don't know if you die are you done already or can you respawn but havenswood is the Ghanaian uh looking castle type fortress place um that we were also able to see uh, basically what else we're able to look at is the storm of the war front so head to the front lines and take part in a large scale 20 player so always a 20 player cooperative front, uh, war front to claim key strategic locations build up your factions forces lead the charge as your troops lay siege to the objectives and battle the enemy commanders as they make way so these are basically 20 player raids for pvp content and it is a pve mode so basically it's 20 player pvp raids if that makes sense and um, they're inspired by the classic Warcraft RTS battles so a little bit more information that will be coming on that pretty soon so I cannot wait to look at that as well and um, we also get to infuse armor with titanic might and what else do we got to see here there's so much to see fam there's so much to see so take control of the heart of Azeroth which is a legendary neck piece entrusted to you by Magni Bronzebeard Imbued in the Azerite, so Azerite is the new um, the new resource that we have to collect in this expansion. An invaluable source resource that's emerged in the Legion's wake to customize your armor with new powers and traits. And uh, there's only going to be three three customizable pieces, and they're basically like talent choices within these pieces. And your neck piece and lock stat, um, your helm, your shoulders, and your chest piece so right now are the three that are going to be. Um, that are going to be given these uh, extra powers, I, w I would say. And then, so, enter a world divided. So, experience a relentless conflict in the heart of uh, War Warcraft Saga. Play through six new zones filled with new world quests. Fuck. New world bosses, new raids, and more. And determine whether the Horde Alliance will shape Azeroth's future. A new level cap of 120, new dungeons and raids, character boosts uh, to 110, and as well as communities. So, find adventures who share common interests through in-game communities and join classroom social groups um, they're basically kind of like guilds but you don't need to be in a guild to be in a community communities it's basically like a facebook group for world of warcraft within world of warcraft let's put it that way that's probably the easiest way to put it and there's going to be so much more to come and there's going to be so much more to uh, talk about so thank you very much for tuning in got questions hit us up in the comment section down below and there was a lot of information to be said in this video but thank you all very much for tuning in and i cannot wait to share some of the gameplay footage with you and have a wonderful day peace out everybody Thank you.